what up, though? It's Duan Dandridge, back with another episode of Speak for Yourself. Of course, we have the one and only Mr. Ken Tight Shirt Elkins. Not Tight Shirt. <laughs> What's happening? Haters! Introduce our, whole, our guest, please, Duan. <laughs> So that's how this gonna be. That's how it's gonna be. Okay. Keep so, going, keep going. As always, as always, we have a special guest, Miss Crystal Gunn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Crystal, the way that we like to kick it off is we like to ask our guests to introduce our set themselves. Mm -hmm. How would you like our audience to know you? Yep, so I am Crystal L. Gunn, financial strategist, speaker, author, coach, CEO, amazing woman, and activist. Own it, man. Oh, that's right. Own it. Sweet. <laughs> so <laughs> let's touch. Let's just jump into the activist part, right? Because I mean, that's the part that's most intriguing to me. So absolutely. How does that show up, or how, like, do you exercise that part of Crystal L. So it's it's twofold. One, empowering Black women in mm. any and every way I can, but specifically reclaiming personal power, mind, body, and spirit, reclaiming financial power and increasing our social involvement. And then all things black economics for my people. Um, mm -hmm. We gotta get our houses financially in order. Okay, love yeah. it, love yeah. it, love it. So, Crystal Gunn sound like an activist name, don't it? It does. Right. does. <laughs> you about to learn, you about to become financially literate or else. Today. Right? Or else. <laughs> else. And then scared to ask what the L stands for. We might have to come up with a new tagline. Right. I like that, you know, you're going to come financially literate today or else. Or else. Okay. Okay. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so what, what got you, like, into that space? What was the thing that pushed you in that direction? So doing what I do now really was because of my own financial storm, okay. right? Like being vice president of a credit union, then starting a mortgage company with my husband at the time. And getting divorced five years into that, doing, you mentioned earlier, the tax business. That's when the tax business was around. Um, did that for a couple years, got lost, and everything just went downhill. Yeah. And it was like, okay, well, what do I do now? Depression, bankruptcy, all of the things that go with that. The yeah. credit, tanking, yeah. and it wasn't a lot of people like me around back then. So you couldn't, you know, go on, Instagram, YouTube, and find people giving tips. So I had to figure it out. And going through the storm, I didn't understand the purpose, but I had to go through that storm in order to do what I do now. So can you speak to the person that's watching right now that feels like the bottom of them fell out, they don't know how to get themselves out of this situation, all is lost. Can you tell them why they should feel like it could be okay? So first I'm gonna tell you to give yourself some grace, right? We beat ourselves up, everybody else beats, our, beats us up. We don't know what we don't know, right? And we weren't taught this thing called finance. We weren't taught, so we don't know. So first of all, you gotta give yourself some grace, but you have to face what you're going through. So you gotta face it, you gotta forgive it, okay. right? Because we hold on to it, right? So the guilt, the shame, all of the stuff, you gotta forgive it and then we can start to fix it. But I am gonna say, don't try to figure it out yourself. Mm. Get some help because you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. So you're trying to do one thing and it's, it's, it's harming you more than it is fixing you. So um, yeah, move the shame, the guilt, the feeling bad, move it aside and get the help that you need in order to get was there, to where was you want to be. Was there three? I missed one. Was there four or was there three? There was well, faith, fix, well, yeah, forgive. Just, first was just give yourself some grace. So, okay. But then face it, forgive so it. GFF. GFFF. <laughs> give okay. yourself grace, face, face it, fi forgive, forgive it, it fix and it. fix it. Yeah. 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 So what if my stuff is jacked up and I don't know what the hell to do, um, but I'm also like, leery of trusting people and I'm low-key embarrassed how do I go about like finding the right person where do I even begin that's supposed to be hypothetical that was that was hypothetical <laughs> I mean um, I gotta just let's answer, just say I, answer look, if it was let's just yeah, answer if it was hypothetical let's just say I got a friend <laughs> 
made some poor choices for right, right, right. <laughs> what should I tell? Okay. Should, what should I tell that friend when it comes to them going to look for somebody? So I think we have to, you know, there's such an emphasis on going to college. I think we need to put that same emphasis on giving financial education, financial literacy. Yeah. But when you talk about the embarrassment, right, we got to start with the shame of the thing. Mm -hmm. Because 75% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. So if it's you and 10 of your friends, 7.5 of y'all right. ain't got the stuff together. Mm -hmm. And here's the other piece. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a financial relationship that wasn't defined by you. Hmm. Same we'll talk about that. Yep. So no, it is. Let me, let me, let me uh, I'm now, if you just like decide you don't want to work and try, it's because of you. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. No, you're and absolutely right. Else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So <laughs> you said if you just don't want to work and try. So <laughs> everyone has a financial relationship. Wasn't defined by you. Yeah. It's what you inherited generationally. Yeah. And I'm not talking about assets. Mm -hmm. It's what you were taught and were not taught growing up. It's what you saw what you overheard, because they weren't talking to you, right? <laughs> but what you overheard. And so then you created this whole thing in your mind. And then you started to grow up. So what happened to you? The insecurities in high school, you wanted to wear all of the clothes because of this, that, or the other. And then the trauma, people disappointed you. Um, social media, what your friends and your family. So all of these outside forces creating your financial relationship, it's not working for you. It's working against you and you don't even know why you operate the way that you operate. So I always say when I work with people, the numbers are easy. I can help you fix your credit. I can help you show you how to use it effectively. I can help you, you know, with an efficient and effective budget, but it's the financial therapy part that we do to get you to understand why you operate the way that you operate. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you can't change it. It's like the people who win the lottery couple million dollars and then two years later they back in the same place yeah. because they haven't fixed their habits their thoughts and all of that stuff yeah. I had an uncle that uh, would get a new Cadillac every now and then mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> we famously jokingly quote him saying I might not have them long but I have them first <laughs> <laughs> like that's what he live by right 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 I might have them long but I got it first <laughs> like basically I'm gonna get it they gonna I'm take it from it. me they, they gonna take it from me but I'm gonna get it they coming back for it <laughs> but, but think about it people still living like that I had got it that's funny people still living like that though yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately yeah. so there so going back to the part about how do you find somebody you trust Go to workshops. There's so many free financial workshops, like in and around this city. There's so many free, fi they should be packed, but they're not because mm -hmm. people are embarrassed. If, if I'm sitting in this workshop, that means somebody gonna think that my stuff not together. Yeah. Well, your stuff ain't together. Right, right. right. And, and that person okay. in the workshop right. with it's, you, it's stuff okay. ain't together. It's okay. <laughs> and that's and okay. it's okay, yes. like again, because most of it is not your fault, but then if you have the ability to sit in that room and don't, Right, then it's your fault. Then it's your fault. It. Yeah, so one of the things that I, I tell people with us doing the no interest loan, right? Like, one of the things that we do is we, we look at your credit history and we don't focus on your credit score. And I often share to people that they're a little bit reluctant and think that they're not going to make it. I say, look, like, you're going to be talking to people that have had their own set of issues. Yes, sir. Right? It's, like, <laughs> it's not like you're going to be talking to a bunch of people that's like, Everything has always been smooth, right? right? Yeah. So like people are going, people understand that we have challenges. We're more likely to have challenges, right? Um, so like, I, I really appreciate you pointing out the, we need to get over the embarrassment. We have right? to, yeah. Um, I can remember when um, being a kid and um, when my mom was getting um, assistance, government assistance. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to go to the store, and she gave me a book of food stamps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, "Ma, I can't go to the, like all my friends outside. So if I go go outside, and I'm getting ready to walk to the store. They're, they're gonna they walk going. with me, right? <laughs> so, Ma, I can't go to the store with these food stamps. They gonna go and they are gonna laugh at me." My mom said, "Boy." All your friends getting food stamps. They all get right. food stamps. And there's no way I believe that. I thought we had to be the only yeah, ones. Yeah. Right? But that's the thing. People think that they're the only one going through the thing. That's yeah. why I always get those statistics. Yeah. 75% of people are living. And here's the other thing. 
it doesn't even matter how much money you make. Hmm. I have people call me two or three times a week and say, Crystal, I make too much money too, dot, 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 whatever yeah, the thing yeah. is, right? Yeah. And we start to think in a lot of cases, will I make this money? or I'm at this station in my right, life. Right. So everyone's going to think that I should be a certain yeah. kind of way, everything should be. And I have to tell people, people ain't even thinking about you like that. Yeah. <laughs> people, right, right, people ain't thinking. They not really even thinking about you like that. That is a very real thing, mm. especially the station in life. You know, I'm 49, a COO. Right. Stuff, so You're supposed to be. How you a COO when your finances ain't right. together? Yeah, it happens every day. <laughs> you know, so I can definitely see it, yeah. how that can be embarrassing. But it's it's those stories that we make up in our mind. And like yep. you said, if if <laughs> just because you're sitting in that workshop doesn't mean that your finances are jacked. It yeah. means you are looking to see what you don't know. Mm, yep, you're it. looking like to see how you can it. improve and yep. get better. There you get go. Because we're not taught this it's stuff. Teach that next generation. And that's listen. Right. That's important to that say part that. right you're there. Right. Yep. Yeah, look so for what you don't know. Look for what you don't know. I used to say when I worked in corporate America, I would say, you know, they have you do all of these trainings and workshops, and I would be like, oh, God, not another training. But when I switched it and I said, if I go in here and I learn one thing that helps me do this job better or all of the stuff that I do outside of work yeah. better, then I've won. Yep. And so if we just go and you learn one new thing that yes. got you over the hump, got you past that 700 score that you was trying to get and couldn't get before, right? One thing, then you won. Just yeah. show up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I would say um, the question that comes to mind is, aside from yourself, mm -hmm. right, what is, and you don't have to give a name, what's the, but you can give a description of their story. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest success story um, that you've experienced in someone like heeding your advice and you being able to help somebody from that place of ignorance to a place of knowledge and they actually took advantage of it. So I had a client, makes great money on her job and in her businesses, right? And I always say we do a lot of financial therapy. There's two things that she said to me. She said, Crystal, I've never done a budget like this before. Mm. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, this budget actually encourages me to live life, right? Mm -hmm. We think of budget, we think restrictions and all right, of that stuff, right. right? And then, but she was able to discover some things. So when we got to the point where we plugged her monthly income in, and this was just from her job, and she had like almost $3,000 that we needed to assign a job, right? Because every dollar you own should have a job. And it flipped her out. And she said she would look at money that she had in the bank and think that she had to spend it. And I said, well, why would you, why? And she said, because I thought if I left it there, it would be taken away from me. So that's something, that's some trauma, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But the other thing that she said was, Crystal, working with you has made me realize that although I have the titles and make all of this money, I still have been living in a scarcity mindset. And that's the thing. So yep. again, doesn't matter how much money you make yep. if you haven't healed the yep. issues that have kept you from thriving. So she had bad credit. She didn't have money saved, right? But it was now, okay, well now you see how you can do it and we've started to heal those other things to make her. Now you can ascend, you can thrive because we're healing those things. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of that scarcity mindset, I think a lot of that, like you were saying, as you mentioned earlier, was passed on yes. to us. Um, like, I know I've lived that way, but I still live that way sometimes now. Um, but there's a difference between being frugal and having a scarcity mindset. Okay. I wouldn't say that you have a scarcity mindset, but we need to be frugal. Yeah. Because <laughs> how many pairs of shoes do we need? Right, right. And I love shoes. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Because I'm, I'm very frugal. And I'm always like, well, you know, I could, I could do this or I could do that. But, but yeah, you know. but it also goes back to understanding what's important to you. Yeah. Like I ask in workshops and my clients, how do you want to live the rest of your life from this day forward? Most people say, you know what? I've never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't make an efficient and effective budget if you don't even know what you want to do in life. Yeah. Like, how do we do the thing? Yeah. So the other client came to me. She was a thousand dollars in a hole every single month. She had what? She was a thousand dollars in a hole every single every month. Single month. So she's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Her yeah. credit cards are maxed out again. And 
we fixed it. I mean, we're still working past that thing, but she's no longer in the hole every single month. But she, but even fixing the thing, and so now we have these credit cards paid off, right? And there, it's itching, like she wants to go use the credit cards. And so she was telling me a story where they were planning a family trip, and her mother said, girl, I can't go, my credit cards are maxed out. And I said, hold on, your credit cards are maxed out. And she was like, yeah, her credit cards are always maxed out. She was like, that's all I've heard. My mother say her credit cards are maxed out. And I said, okay. I said, your credit cards are maxed out for a second time. I said, you associate having credit cards with them being maxed out mm. because that's what you've heard all your right. life, yep. right? So when we talk about also leaving that financial legacy, you're leaving one, one way or one another. Way or another. Her mother left the legacy of having credit cards maxed out, not intentionally, but yeah. that's just what it was. Yeah. So being able to do those sort of things and being able to see people turn around is like, I love it. Yeah, I hear, so I hear like, like freedom and the, like deliverance and- uh, Wisdom. Yeah, moving away from like, kind of like bondage and being stuck and yeah. trapped. And. and when you Place. redefine your personal financial relationship, it positively impacts every area of your life because the same things that's messing up your finances is showing up in all those other areas. So you automatically start to heal those other areas. And when we talk about black people won't support one another, we won't do this, we can't come together, we don't own nothing, we can't until we heal our own individual financial situations. If my finances are jacked up, I'm not going to trust you to do anything, mm. right? Mm. I don't trust me because my own stuff is messed up. So how are we going to do business together? That's heavy. Mm -hmm. just, just jacked me up with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so we can keep having these conversations. Black people want to come together and do. Now, some of us do, right? But for the majority, we still don't own all of the stuff that we should own. Yeah. It's because we haven't healed individually. Mm. I'm sorry. I want y'all to be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just gut punched them both. Like, yeah, because because part of part of the reason it jacked me up is because we run an organization that is built on the hope that people will come together. Mm-hmm. Right. And sometimes we're always having conversations internally about how do we get black people to come together this way in droves, right? We've given away or loaned over $2.8 million to black entrepreneurs. If you don't trust us after seeing us do that, listen, I don't know how we're gonna get you to trust us. You can't. But we desperately need people to trust us enough to just donate just a dollar a week right um, there's so much more need out there and we're positioned as an organization to help those need that that need right but we're only going to be able to do so much um, unless people start coming in by the tens of thousands yeah and so that's every, why I jack me up every black person in the city of Detroit should have a membership to the museum and should be part of black leaders of Detroit Say that again, a little louder. <laughs> that microphone. Every, every, every black person in the city of Detroit should have a membership at the at the at the museum, which one? at the Charles H. Wright Museum, okay. and should have a membership in Black Leaders of Detroit. Okay. Because there's no reason, and and here's just the honest to God truth: there's no reason why any black organization has to get funding from outside of the community. Yeah. We Which, got enough money inside right. the community. Yeah. Right. And though Especially we should have to, ass. we will always. Oh, now, nah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no question. We, but like, we should be able to finance our own stuff agreed. because agreed. we have enough money. Have but enough if I don't trust people, myself because right. yeah. I haven't healed my own traumas, yep. how can I? Listen, this is a true story. I was at an event and somebody from Black Leaders Detroit was presenting business association meeting. And, <laughs> you know, he was saying how you all, you know, give resources for the things that you all don't do. You'll direct them somewhere else and such and such and such. 
and one and one of the pe one of the one of the people in the audience said, "Well, do I have to be a member in order to get those resources, to get that list of resources?" And I wanted that was to me. <laughs> that was me. I think it wasn't. It, it wasn't, wasn't me. Because oh, okay. that's happened to me before. Been at the, um, but I, one of those that I has wanted to say. Yes, right. you'll need to be, I mean, he's a like, dollar no. a week. Right. And, and I was like, this is not my presentation. I'm just sitting here. But yet, you should want to be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, and that's it's the happened reply. to me before. You ever, don't have ever, to, but ever, you should want to. You should ever want since somebody to be. from the audience asked me that question, I went, I went and picked me up a homie the clown sock. <laughs> So now every time somebody say that to me, no, I'm almost winding up. Yeah, winding up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Homie, don't play you know that. I mean? Can Homie. I come get thousands and not give a dollar? Right. 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 I was yeah. like, but like we literally mean? have had people. I'm about to vent now. <laughs> We've literally had people get ten thousand dollars from Black Leaves Detroit and been asked to just donate a dollar a week to still have that. Right. And I I'm got about ten thousand grand. Got ten racks. Yeah. And, um, but that's the healing that we got to yeah, do because yeah. that it shouldn't even be a, like you shouldn't even. I felt like everybody sitting in that room, if they weren't part of Black Leaders Detroit, they should have been saying, yeah. "How do I get on there today? Right. Like, not in even moment. in this moment." Yep. Yes. Agreed. Like, oh, the yeah. small amount to help entrepreneurs. And it's a small. Right. Right. Listen and. They ain't got to pay fifty-two dollars all at once. <laughs> right, <laughs> dollar dollar week. Week. right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. You so know, yeah. But a lot of people look like, well, what do I get out of it? You know, and that's the unfortunate mindset yeah. that some people have. Well, what, <clears throat> I don't. I'm not an entrepreneur, so how does it benefit me? But if you think about people from other communities and cultures, Listen. they can't get money from us, yeah. and how fast they'll sign up. Yeah. Sometimes. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah. It's like. They know they don't have anything coming from Black Women's Detroit. Right. But they believe but they, in creating fairness because they, they know black folk have dealt with the brunt of this discrimination when it comes to access to capital. Mm -hmm. So they're like, let me play a part. In and we won't play stuff. a part. We won't. Not all of us. So no, there's no, no, no. Listen, yes. No, not but, all but, of us. Not fast enough. Not fast enough. It's not fast enough. Not fast enough. And it's not enough. Not as many as, as we feel yeah. should. Yeah. But it goes back to that healing. We yeah. got to do better by ourselves. Be healed. <laughs> be healed. Be healed. Oh, be healed. We got to do better. Yes. Well, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. I appreciate it. Your, your knowledge appreciate with us. It. Thank you all for what yeah. you guys do. Thank you. I got my grant from you guys back in February. A couple people nominated me. That, And that's the other thing. Like, we ain't got to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we try to eliminate as many as possible. Yeah. Yeah, so. Put the money in the hands of entrepreneurs. It's always been our That's, that's my black vision, our Detroit goal. plug. So when we first started the organization, um, put the money in the hands of entrepreneurs and together we can do that and you may not benefit directly from it today but I promise you at some point you will. And you're, you, they're helping in legacy building yeah. like whether they're an entrepreneur or not they're helping in legacy building you're yeah. helping someone that when you don't kid, even know. Your sister, your cousin get ready to go for a loan or exactly. open up their business. Correct. Good luck to them. If Black Men's Detroit is not positioned right. Exactly. Right. Right. Good so, yeah. luck to them. So bravo to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Absolutely. you. Do you want to like take a shot at Chez for saying you were long-winded earlier? Since he can't, <laughs> yeah, can't defend himself. Yeah, you, you want to take a shot at him? Yeah, he he outside. He outside. Shots fired. I think he was being funny. Well, you weren't as long-winded. We'll, 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 we'll let him slide. I can be long-winded. When it talk comes to talking about empowering my talk, people. Like, what, you, what you said is on point. That yeah, was. I will yeah. be. You're passionate yeah. about it, rightfully so. And we yeah. thank you for coming and sharing it Absolutely. with us. And now we have it available to share with others that's watching. So thank you so much for coming. You're most welcome. Well, that's another episode of Speak for Yourself. Thank y'all for watching. Please hit that like, subscribe, share button. Peace. Are you looking to elevate your next gathering with a touch of sophistication? Look no further than Janet K. Charcuterie. Picture this, a beautifully arranged spread of delectable bites crafted with the finest local ingredients designed to impress even the most discerning palate. 
At Janike, we pride ourselves not only on our exquisite charcuterie offerings, but also on our unparalleled commitment to customer satisfaction. Whether you're hosting a cozy dinner party or a lavish soiree, let us help make it an unforgettable experience. Visit our website at Janike.com or give us a call at 313-405-7445 to place your order today. When it comes to charcuterie, think of Janike.